everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be learning about ratios and proportions. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define the words ratio and proportion. The ratio of one number to another is the quotient when the first number is divided by the second. The quotient is usually expressed in simplest form. Ratios can also be expressed in three different ways. For instance, we can write it out, so you can say 3, 2, 1. You can use a colon, which would look like this. Or you can write a ratio in a fraction, which would be 3 over 1. Proportions, in sense, are just equal ratios. So for instance, the ratio 1 over 2 equals 2 over 4. This would be a proportion. Proportions are often used with cross multiplication. So for instance, if I had x over five equals three over one, I would do five times three equals 15, which equals x. So this is one way that we could use proportions to solve for things. All right, let's go ahead and try some exercises using ratios and proportions. So for our next exercises, we are told that x equals 12, y equals 10, and z equals 24. And we are told to write each ratio in its simplest form. So for our first problem, it says x to y. So to write our ratio, we would just plug in 12 for x and 10 for y. So our answer would be 12 to 10. That was a pretty simple one. Let's try another. This one says x plus y to z. So make sure that you notice that the two is written there. So we know that our word two is going to be here. Now all what we have to do is plug in our numbers. So 12 plus 10 to 24. Of course, we can simplify this to 22 to 24. However, if we look at both of these problems, there is one thing that we can do to both of them, and that is simplify. So in ratios, although you might get your final answer, it doesn't mean that it's the simplest form. For number one, let's simplify this. So both 12 and 10 can be divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our final answer for this one would be 6 to 5. For this one down here, both of these numbers can also be divided by 2. 22 divided by 2 is 11, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. So our final answer would be 11 to 12. Let's try this again, but with some different numbers this time. All right, let's go ahead and plug in our numbers for this problem. So on our numerator, we would have eight plus 14 divided by six minus eight. So we can first simplify our numerator and our denominator. So eight plus 14 equals 22. 6 minus 8 equals negative 2. Let's ignore the negative sign for a moment and just simplify our numerator and denominator. We can divide both of these numbers by 2. 22 divided by 2 is 11, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now let's just go ahead and add in our negative sign. We could put the negative sign in front of our entire fraction because remember, if either the numerator or the denominator is negative, then the entire fraction will be negative. So our final answer is negative 11 to 1. For this last problem, we are using the last form of ratios, which uses the colon. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So 6 would go here, then with our colon, and then in parentheses, you would have 6 plus 8, close parentheses, another colon, and then 8 plus 14. Let's go ahead and simplify the numbers in our parentheses first. 6 plus 8 is 14, and 8 plus 14 is 22. Now, over here, we're going to rewrite our ratio. So we have 6 to 14 to 22. Something that's in common with all of these numbers is that they're even, which means we can divide each of these numbers by two. So six divided by two is three, 14 divided by two is seven, 
and 22 divided by 2 is 11. So our simplified answer and ratio is going to be 3 to 7 to 11. All right, now that we've reviewed some things about ratios, let's go ahead and work with proportions. Now, there are many different properties of proportions, which I'm going to go ahead and write on the screen now. All right, so these are properties of proportions. So pretty much they say that A over B equals C over D is equivalent to and can be written in all of these different forms. So our first form is just using cross multiplication, which would be A, A times D equals B times C. And the next form states that having the numerators as a ratio is going to equal having the denominators as a ratio. The third one is pretty much just flipping the original one. So instead of A over B, it's going to be B over A. Our next property of proportion says that by adding the numerator and the denominator over the denominator is going to equal adding the numerator and the denominator divided by the denominator. For this final one, it pretty much says that if all of the ratios are equal to each other, then adding all of the ratios up is just going to be equal to one of the ratios. So to make this a little more clear, if we had 1 over 2 plus 2 over 4 plus 3 over 6, these are all equal as you know, they all equal 1 half. And pretty much this is saying that if you add them all up, which would be 6 over 12, this is equal to just using one of the proportions which are in the equation. So this will make it a lot easier. Instead of having to add all of them up, you could just pick one of the ratios and say the entire thing added up is equal to this. Now, before we go on, I'd like to go over the first property of proportion that we learned, which said that AD equals BC. Now the reason why I like to focus on this one is because this one actually has a specific name. All of the other properties which are on the previous screen are all known as the property of proportion. However, this one is called the means extremes property. So if you look at our original proportion that we have here, we have A over B equals C over D. Now we learned earlier in this video that you can also write this using the colon. So we could write it as A to B equals C to D. Now, if you look at it this way, you can see that B and C here are the means, and A and D on the outside are the extremes. That is why we call this property over here the means extremes property. Now, the only reason I'm pointing this out to you is so that when you're in geometry and you are planning on using this property in a proof, make sure that you are writing it out as the means extremes property. All of the other properties for the proportions that we looked at, you can label as property of proportion. All right, let's go ahead and do some exercises involving some proportions. The instructions tell us to solve for x. So in order to do this, we're going to use our means extremes property. So x times 5 equals 5x, and 3 times 4 equals 12. So we have 5x equals 12. However, we want to get x by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 5, and our final answer is going to be x equals 12 over 5. 12 over 5 is the simplest form that this ratio can be in, so that is our final answer. All right, let's try another problem. For this one, we are also told to solve for x, so we're going to use our means extremes property. So we are first going to multiply 2 times x plus 5 equals 4. We can go ahead and use a distributive property, so it'll be 2x plus 10 equals 4. 
Next, we're going to combine like terms, just how you would normally do. 4 minus 10 equals negative 6. And then we're going to get x by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x is going to equal negative 3. The final thing we're going to do today is find the measurement of each angle in these problems. So the first problem says the ratio of the measures of two complementary angles is 4 to 5. So there's actually a special formula that you can use to find out the answers to these problems. So we know that complementary angles means that two angles are going to equal 90 degrees. So we know that our ratio is 4 to 5. So there's a special formula we can use where we say that 4 times x plus 5 times x is going to equal the sum of our ratio, which we know is 90 degrees. So we can go ahead and combine like terms, which is going to be 9x equals 90, and then x equals 10. However, we're not done. So now we know what x is, we need to plug it back into our original equation. So our first angle is 4x, which means the measurement of angle 1 is going to equal 40 degrees. And then our second angle over here is 5x, which means 5 times 10. So our measurement of angle 2 is going to equal 50 degrees. And this right here is our final answer. All right, let's try another one of those problems. So this problem says the measures of the angles in a triangle are in the ratio 3, 4, and 5. So let's go ahead and draw our triangle just to make this a little more visual for you guys. So our ratio is 3 to 4 to 5. So we know that angle 1 over here is going to be 3x. Angle 2 is going to be 4x, and angle 3 is going to be 5x. Now we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle have to equal 180. So we can say that 3x plus 4x plus 5x equals 180. 3x plus 4x plus 5x equals 12x. 180 divided by 12 equals 15. So our x is going to equal 15. Now let's go ahead and plug this in to our problem. So the measurement of angle 1 is equal to 3 times 15. 3 times 15 equals 45. So the measurement of angle 1 is 45 degrees. The measurement of angle 2 equals 4x. 4 times 15 equals 60. So the measurement of angle 2 is 60 degrees. The measurement of our last angle is 5x. 5 times 15 equals 75. So the measurement of our last angle is 75 degrees. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that this video was helpful to you and that you learned a lot. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!